Hi, I'm Greg LeBlanc, and I'm here at the Haas School of Business with uh, Li Deng, who is the Chief AI Officer at Citadel. Welcome, Li. Thank you very much for inviting me. So, Li, before going, coming to Citadel, you uh, were at Microsoft for many years, and you were involved in a lot of uh, the uh, important advances in speech recognition. And uh, I think you said that um, deep learning really was transformational, and it really represented a uh, discontinuous jump in advancement in, in speech recognition. Could you say a little bit about what has what is so revolutionary about deep learning? Yes, indeed. Um, like before deep learning, uh, the dominant technology was what's called the uh, you know we call the shallow machine learning methods. You know, hidden Markov model, Gaussian matrix model that has been dominating the field for at least about twenty to thirty years. Now, deep learning was revolutionary in the sense that it actually disrupted um, the kind of paradigm um, in this uh, technology field by allowing the representation of speech signal in terms of hierarchy of the, uh, in the neural network mm -hmm. and also in terms of the sequence processing. Both, uh, in, we can say that both in terms of temporal domain and also in spatial domain. Mm -hmm in such a way that many different components of speech recognition system can be unified in learning mm -hmm. and in technical terms, we call that end-to-end -end learning. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result of this powerful paradigm, um, uh, speech recognition error rate has been dropped by you know, at least about 60, 70% mm -hmm. compared to just a few, uh, a few years ago before deep learning came into show. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the great things about uh, expertise in machine learning and artificial intelligence is that it's it, you can move across domains and and you're one of the folks who has recently made a leap uh, into the domain of, of finance which is um, realized the need for these tools um, so how is finance different um, yeah. you can obviously use some of the tools but the type of data that you're dealing with is, yeah. is, is, is very different yeah so basically to move from uh, you know the technology related to speech, natural language, into something related to finance, uh, there are some similarities there, and also there are even more important differences. So the similarity looks a little bit superficial in the sense that market data and, and the speech data or natural language data, they are both sequential in nature, okay? So you might think that, well, they are changing as a function of time, maybe they have some similar problems. Um, and and as a matter of fact, the differences are very big. So there are actually three major challenges in finance compared with some of the earlier work that I did um, uh, in, on speech and natural language um, at Microsoft and also in my current company, I'm working on those problems as well. So the main difference, the number one difference is that the signal to noise ratio is much, much lower in finance mm -hmm. uh, domain. Um, so that uh, high level of noise manifest themselves both in the input as well as in the output. Um, whereas um, the noise level mm -hmm. for other applications tend to be much lower. Mm -hmm. And the second challenge is, is something what I call the non-stationarity. Uh, on the surface, that non-stationarity non also happens in speech and natural language signal. Right? Uh, yeah, in reality, the finance signals uh, nationality actually has its own causal reasons, and that causal reason is competition among you know different participants. Right? Uh, whereas in uh, you know speech and natural language or vision systems, uh, that kind of nationality due to competition mm -hmm. doesn't seem to mm -hmm. sort of uh, to manifest themselves at all. And that creates a big challenge for finance. No one's trying to fake out the uh, the speech recognition system. Yes, yeah. Nobody, you know, very rarely. Mm -hmm. right? You know, if you are looking at, uh, you know, Microsoft Cortana, um, you know, Google's assistant system, and Amazon's um, Alexa, you know, most of the people don't want to, you know, to compete. <laughs> right. You just you know, get a job done, and then you're happy. Right? Whereas mm -hmm. in finance, it's a completely different world. Mm -hmm. And the third, of uh, the third challenge that the one I talk about uh, in in the lecture today, is uh, heterogeneity 
nature of the big data. Uh, in our finance domain, mm -hmm. we call the alternative data. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and that data consisted of text, uh, speech, image, uh, as well as um, market data, mm -hmm. uh, and also fundamental data. Uh, you know, that it's the, the, the number of, the diversity of data is mm -hmm. much bigger mm -hmm. in finance domain, the one that I'm encountering yeah. now, compared to uh, the previous um, you know, work that I've been mm -hmm. doing. Now, you said that uh, one of the things that is a uh, real bottleneck here in the, the uh, development of AI for finance and other business applications is the availability of talent. Um, how possible is it for there to be someone who is both um, deeply versed in a domain such as finance and also in uh, the technical areas of machine learning? Yes, uh, the opinion on this issue actually uh, differs by different people, right? But for me, uh, I feel that um, the artificial intelligence technology and deep learning technology now are very powerful. Uh, they actually uh, should be applied you know, in many areas of finance domain. However, due to the challenges I just mentioned, especially the challenge of very high noise level mm -hmm. in finance data, demands that we do um, sort of artificial intelligence application in finance domain in quite a different way than in traditional technology that have been working in the past. Um, and in particular, um, the, um, the high noise level is sort of, you know, it's, a, it's similar to the problem of in, uh, in you know, high-tech industry, we call the small data problem. Mm -hmm. right? Even if the data on surface is big, due to the very fact that the noise level is high, it makes, <coughs> you know, the some standard technique mm -hmm. of dealing with big data not as effective mm -hmm. as otherwise, you know, we got better technology. Mm -hmm. So I do feel that some of the technology that many people have been talking about, you know, developed by some really good researchers, some of them have been sort of, uh, sort of ignored mm -hmm. by the current wave of AI. You know, dealing with the small data would have important role to play. Mm -hmm. uh, now, in terms of talents, uh, as related to the economics, finance background, I personally feel that um, in order to solve a noisy data problem, in terms of solve small data problem, in a small in the sense that you know noise due to mm -hmm. you know, but in reality data is still mm -hmm. a lot, right? Uh, some of the economic, financial uh, sort of knowledge and their models would have some place to play. Right. It would have some role to play. To help sort through all that noise and figure out what the relevant signal is. Right. Okay. I think, you yeah. know, the combination. So we do, you know, our company do look for uh, the talent savvy in both areas. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, since our team is a uh, research team, we em our priority is to get talent that are savvy in technology first. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we will hope that, you know, your has school can train, uh, you know, your students uh, and your, you know, graduates that are actually good at both. Okay, well, thank you so much, Lee, for coming in. Thank you very much, great for inviting me to be here. <laughs>